I am Godfrey Bijumar, student of first year in English from Bethelius College Coding. People have different misconceptions about people with physical or mental impairments. People suffering with autism spectrum disorder live in the middle of such misconceptions. So the igno ignorance faced by these people gave rise to the call for the rights of the disabled, which in turn led to the birth of disability studies. So, through this paper, my primary focus is to distinguish and examine the psychological and social outlooks as given in the book titled The Boy Who Loved Windows by Patricia Stassi as well as Rain Man, a 1988 film directed by Barry Levinson. So, let's have a look into what is disability studies. Disability studies is a comparatively recently developed area of study but has gained immense popularity that has elevated its position from an obscure field to a multidisciplinary area of uh, debate. Uh, the period after 1980s witnessed a serious improvement in the status and importance of disability studies. Uh, disability studies, as the name suggests, uh, primarily deals with the examination of various disabilities through multi multiple disciplines. It is a relatively novel concept which emerged in the late 1980s out of the disability civil rights movements uh, which occurred in the United States. Uh, at its infancy, the primary focus of this discipline was to distinguish between the popular terms impairment and disability. The, form, the former term, that is impairment, implies an impairment of an individual's physical organ or uh, a complete dysfunction of one's physical organ, the disability. Then uh, disability, it means it is, a, it is a creation of the society. The word disabled and disability are always accompanied with two kinds of perceptions. Firstly, it is the perception of a pitiable situation that evokes sympathy and secondly, it is the view of a marginalized section incapable of doing the activities that normal people do. The traditionally followed view of disablement as a problem was sustained by many people and established it as a medium of difference that distinguishes such people from others. Such people are viewed with the perspective that they cannot or uh, cannot behave or perform like normal people. So uh, here comes the main question, what is normal? So the concept of normal this general idea of being normal adds to the complication of the popular idea of disability. Although there is no fixed stigma upon which being normal is built upon, as these concepts are subjective, they vary from place to place, from person to person. Uh, as perceptions change, as the societies change, what is being normal is always varied. So it is not constant. So. Uh, those people who do not satisfy the conditions of being normal are considered disabled. Now coming to the intellectual groundwork for this field, it was provided by several influential scholars of the 1960s and 1970s. The, so the irony about these writers and their work was that uh, they were not a deliberate attempt to describe disability or to offer an idea of liberation for disabled people. The works of scholars like Irving Goffman, Michel Foucault, are regarded important in the flourishing of the field of disability studies. In his study titled Stigma, which was published in 1963, the sociologist Irving Goffman analyzes the life and experience of the stigmatized people and makes a comparison with the normal, including those with bodily impairments. Through this work, he points out how disability is socially formed and is varied uh, by time and place. Michel Foucault was another influential philosopher and critic who wrote about impaired bodies. Now, in his work titled The History of Sexuality, uh, published in 1976, he described how impaired bodies were segregated, controlled, and uh, were placed in society, uh, society, in the society. Another important intellectual person, uh, uh, as, far, as far as disability studies is concerned, is Leonard J. Davis, an American scholar, writer and critic. So in his work uh, titled Enforcing Normalcy, which was uh, published in 1995, 
He showed that normalcy with its current meaning emerged around mid 19th century with the advent of industrial revolution. Davis conducted a clear cut operation of early novels of literary works. He discovered that most of the 19th century novels strongly propagated the idea of normalcy by the portrayal of the protagonist as a non disabled ordinary citizen, while on the other hand, those characters having a certain disability, they were given very negligible, very meager roles. Uh, for example, characters like Tiny Tim in Charles Dickens' work, A uh, Christmas Carol, uh, published in 1843, are examples in which the very name given to the character indicates the social backdrop of the society and the unhealthy treatment of the disabled people. Now, as far as the works referred for this paper are concerned, both deal with autistic characters. Autism is a neurological and a developmental disorder uh, that is connected, that is uh, that affects how people interact with others, how uh, people interact with uh, others around their society, uh, about the familial relations. Patricia Stacey's book, The Boy Who Loved Windows, speaks a lot about the relationship of an autistic person with their family and others around their social milieu. The question of acceptance and care and living with an autistic individual is the primary question that the work imposes. The Boy Who Loved Windows is a signature work that speaks volumes about her writing style. Now, Patricia Stacy and her husband Cliff doubted a developmental disorder within a two-week time of uh, their child's birth. So, they researched and discovered sensory integration problems. So, the most important thing in this case is that the family's early recognition of symptoms really came handy in understanding the child's disorder and gave him the best he could get. So, the proper treatment and proper care made him excel in his life and he became a bright child. Coming to the next work, Rayman. The portrayal of Raymond Babbitt, an autistic middle-aged man. He is different from traditional perceptions of an autistic individual, considering the fact that he is emotionally weak but an intelligent, a fast learner. He is, he is capable of doing speed calculations, complex multiplication solution, uh, uh, problems. And uh, he also has the capability to memorize schedules, and uh, square roots, uh, multiplication problems and square roots with lightning speed and accuracy. The film Rain Man by Barry Levinson puts forward certain questions to the audience. The first and prominent question is about living and creating a relation with an autistic person. The answer for these questions must be answered by our conscience. Considering the time of 1988, the release year of the film, the concept of autistic people or any other physically or mentally disordered people were viewed with mock and laughter. So, autistic people are now more recognized of, of their extra abilities to memorize and recollect complex things like calculations. So, things have changed a lot as we live in uh, this 2023 era of 21st century. So, as far as the field of disability studies is concerned, both these works are excellent instruments of awareness and a means of recognition for the talents of autistic people. So, with that being said, I conclude my uh, presentation. Uh, a concluding note, accepting an autistic child as a gifted child is the greatest virtue any family can pursue. So a better understanding of their limitations as well as their abilities can help such individuals to excel in their lives. Love them, embrace them. Thank you.